What is very interesting is that when you look at PSD2 from uh, European banks, it's seen, it, it is seen as a big constraint. Constraint is uh, about, wow, I'm a bank, I'm going to share my information on my accounts, but um, well, then I'm going to become a commodity for all the fintechs and everybody. Why should I do this? Lots of fear, you know. What's interesting is that when you talk about PSD2 to non-bank, non-European banks, they say, wow, what a great initiative this regulator has been, has been providing and pushing forward. Uh, this, is, this is going to help the European bank to be competitive because the regulation is going to set a uh, level playing for all the banks in Europe so that the banks can con concentrate on innovation. Wow. So, you know, th this is what, what I see. Um, so this is where the top down and bot well, bottom up, you know, the, the guys, you know, stuck in compliance and what needs to be done, da 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 da. And bottom up, uh, top down is, wow, let's go to innovate. You know, let's say also the half full, half empty uh, glass. Okay. Um, having said that, if, if we deep into the compliance issues, uh, you, you, you know, the PSD2 actually started with payment, with payment initiation. And uh, the idea has been to uh, regulate these new players that were initiate payments while not being regulated. So in other words, for the end customer, like you and me, and when you are do, do, doing an e-shopping some, somewhere, you would buy something and the guy in the middle, the payment initiator, if not regulated, would not bear the risk of a credit transfer that eventually is done. This is what was done by Zofort, for example, in Germany. So that's why the revision of the directive has been triggered. Actually, it went beyond that with the account aggregators. And then comes the second, um, let's say, um, uh, third-party pro provider, which, is, which are the account information service providers. That, you know, because when you, when you are sharing information or when from you, your own account you, you, you need to share, it's not, maybe not. At first to make a payment it can be to see how, uh, how is your balance look like on your account and uh, if you have other accounts maybe we can switch to another account in order to make payment. Da, 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 da. So yeah, there are many things that happen and then the regulator says okay we need to regulate that this will help the, uh, the banks to innovate. Hurdles are how to share, which method um, and how to secure, you know, how the banks, and this is very legitimate, how the banks are going to be able to, you know, to, to, to assume, not to assume, but uh, to, uh, to address the uh, responsibility they have in terms of know your customer regulations. And also in terms of AML and so forth. So all, all this, the, 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 let's say the uh, various constraints we are talking about. Starting with methods, the RTS, you know, the regulatory technical, uh, the technical standards. Are, well, this is not me saying. This is known all over the place. There will be not not technical, neither standards. So we are talking a lot about APIs, okay? But when you look at the two TPPs, the last draft of the RTS is stating that APIs will be used for payment initiation service providers. But nothing is said well, for the account information service providers. So people are in the middle of nowhere from an RTS perspective, uh, and that's an issue. So, and everybody is talking about API. How to standardize, to which extent we should standardize. So this is the PSD2 and this is where we are. What happens is that UK is certainly more active. 
and um, you, you, you know we, we are very active with Payment UK in order to provide our experience and our return on experience not only in Europe but also in Australia, in Asia, in the US. And um, what they what they are saying is that okay, um, firstly, well, we're very specifically too that's cool, but. The Treasury, the Her Majesty's Treasury has been issuing an open banking API. I, I, I don't know how to enable it, it's not really a regulation, but it's what they would like the, 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 the bank to comply to. And this was one year and a half ago, approximately. What is more important and more interesting is that the Competition and Market Authority, the CMA, has been issuing a very clear report basically three reports one on the issues end of last year first draft of the remedies early it was in may and an, an update of this remedies in august what it says is very interesting they are saying in order to have a level playing field uh, from a competitive market perspective Mr. and Mrs. Banks, you need to open it access to accounts. And, the, uh, and this to nine banks in UK, among which, you know, the Lloyds, Barclays, HSBC, and so forth. So suddenly, you know, it becomes, oh, okay. You know, if you look at UK, which is still in Europe, well, you can take a discuss about how long they will stay in Brexit and all that sort of things, but let's forget that for the moment. They are going way beyond PSD2. That's very interesting. And uh, they, they, they are pushing forward all the discussions around the API. So this is what comes from the top. Now if we dig a little bit on, on this, actually, you know, if I come back to the opportunities. Uh, the opportunities are very interesting. That what if you have an open API that where external players can go and get information on your account? Yeah. Oh yeah, that's a risk. But let's see the positive aspect of that. If you are a bank, why don't you offer something that consolidates the other banks? You know, there are some studies are showing that for corporates, you know, because we are lots of talking about retail banks or relationship with the end customer like you and me. What about the, 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 the you know the transaction banks, corporate banks? And what is interesting is that corporates are less and less happy with their banks for a simple reason, like you and me. They they are not happy with the level of service they are providing. Are they you know are they flexible? Are they agile? How do they help? the corporates in order to do better the job of a corporate in regards to their own customers, you know. And that's interesting because, you know, if, if, if a PSD2, the CMA regulations and things like this happens, a bank can role, do the role of an aggregation of other banks and provide a very strong and, and, and uh, you know, value proposition to their corporates. I don't know, we can imagine, we can talk about tertiary management, uh, you know, we can make lots of optimizations. And I'm not a banker, so I'm not sure what, what would make sense, but this is a way of thinking. So instead of, you know, looking at the half and the glass, looking at all what is difficult, which is really difficult, let's think about what we can provide to the ecosystem, to the end customer for retail banks, to the corporate for a trend, you know, trend, uh, corporate banking bank bankers, and and that's where the the innovation lies.